pushing it in <laughs> um so we had to push it into the shop because uh, i think we're having some voltage issues with the battery cable that was put on here um so we're gonna put maybe a better quality battery cable because uh, the voltage is dropping too low and as most of you know if you know us swap something it does not like voltage drop so it's having a hard time cranking uh on the way to mini nights last year uh made it all the way there next morning woke up no air ride uh compressor in the cvt tank went out so we're going to probably delete that today um it's set for a while and I hooked everything back up and went to crank it a couple of days ago and lo and behold the CVT started working again but I don't think we're going to chance it we're probably going to delete that put new uh, put new compressors on it and just run it without the intake compressor and I think that's about it we're putting some new control arms on it Maybe we'll tell you guys why we're doing that while we are doing it. Um, we'll discuss that first before we talk about it. But we're going to be putting new control arms on the front and uh, buttoning a few things up so that we can get to driving again. So stay tuned. Man, all right. If y'all don't know what we're talking, working them on, it's the UVT K5 built. What, about three years ago, four years ago? How long's it been? Four years. Four years ago. Four? The get down, right? Mm, no, it was LST. Oh, yeah, it was LST, right. That's right. No, it's it was. been to the get down, but we built it. It's been to the get down, but you know, remember it's LS swapped and all that good stuff. Got slosh tubs in it now. Courtesy of Aaron, you put those in, right? Yep, slosh tubs, 75%. Uh, <clears throat> through the vintage air install so heat oh, yeah. works we just got to get the ac lines done and it will have ac um so uh you guys will probably see some things that we've done along the way so few, hey, few little here. things it's trey everybody so y'all remember this thing pretty cool Every time Aaron acquires something, he just uh, puts them finishing touches on it. You know what I mean? So uh, stay tuned. Here we go. Hey, Trey. Hey, Wesley. How are you this morning? Good. Trey, what are you doing? 
Uh, we're gonna go ahead and take the calipers and everything off and hang those up and have them ready to go. Got miss some Michigan metalwork arms on it. Is that an auto or an advanced by my house over there? Aaron got some fancy dancy portable belt control arms that we're gonna change out and put on here. Auto See if we can uh suck the top of these wheels in a little bit. Mm-hmm. As you can see, see the you can see the angle of the um, caliper or the rotor, I'm sorry. See how it angles out? So we're trying to correct that so it doesn't rub on the, the lip of the fender right here. So, same thing on this side. See if we can't get that figured out. In the other process, see if we can't get this Optima battery. Hanging out there sideways on the frame. Mike's texting on his phone. See if we can't get it figured out. Here we go. So this is how we got Aaron home from Mini Nats. Schrader valves and airline from the tanks and everything up there or from not really the tank because we had to air him up from on the Jeremy's way home on from, yeah. from Jeremy's tank so he's letting all the air out of the bags now and we're going to get to work Trey and I got these off. We're gonna put these fancy dancy ones together. <clears throat> Some porter built ones. Ooh, they're they're pretty too. Bring them in about an inch. Hopefully, everything works well.
but we already got the upper and lower zone. We had it. We had a time with those. <laughs> we had to take them all back apart, put some powder, grind off the powder coating. It was fun, let me tell you. Now we're putting the bag back in and the uh, shot back on. That's leaning in instead of leaning out. Now we have corrected the problem. Now we just need to go get it aligned. Just putting the rest of it on. Go from there. What we got, Aaron? So we started out with Michigan Metalworks control arms and all that on the floor. After trying mm -hmm. to figure out why we couldn't get an alignment on the... <laughs> <laughs> After trying to figure out why the alignment guys could not get the front wheels lined up correctly, the camber was crazy on it. Uh, we put some tape on the control arms and realized that when Michigan Metalworks sent the arms to the previous owner, they sent stock upper arms and they sent one inch narrow and forward lower arms, which was kicking the top way out and we could never get it lined up. Uh, once we added the slosh tubs, when you would go to lay it out, the wheels wouldn't come far enough in to fit, to miss the outer edge. So I ended up finding a set of portable arms, rebuilt them, had them powder coated, thanks to my buddy Brent Blakely over at uh, Blakely Industries. He got them looking good for me. We put them all back together, got them on here, and it looks like everything on the front is going to line up now. We won't have camber issues, and the wheels should pull in enough to lower the front down. Uh, whenever and we park smash it. the fenders and not smash the inside of the slosh tubs that were added so while we were there we put new brakes on um, and tightened everything up and looks like we're good to go on the front so far so still got some work on the back stuff but as far as the front goes we should have that ready to go back on the ground Right now. We can look. You can see. Like you see how much this this cambered in. You could tell. Last time you saw how it, it was angled out. So we should be good to go. But everything looks good. The Porterbill arms that we put on it are one inch narrow, one inch forward arms. So that should pull everything in and it should be lined up and pull those wheels in so that we have the clearance to lower it. I don't want to say lay it out because it does not lay out. <laughs> <laughs> so if anybody wants some Michigan Metalwork arms. Some, some fabrication required. Some. Or if you just want if you just want uppers that will clear your steering shaft that are stock length uppers, yeah, leave a go. comment or get with me. We might be able to work something out. Yeah, they're not bad arms. Yeah, if you're into that kind of thing. You're always into that kind of thing, Mike. I know. 
Or if you need that sway bar. No issue with the arms. I obviously knew that getting these arms used and rebuilding them, I could have them on the blazer way faster than trying to order a set of arms, wait for them to come in, etc., etc. So I was, I, I actually ran across uh, some arms. Uh, Jonathan Cobb was selling, and so he was local to me. I ran down, picked them up, took them apart, had them powder coated. So it just saved time. Uh, if it weren't for that, I probably would have just ordered the upper arms, but uh, we went the faster route and I just swapped them out. So now I'm running Porter Built. Word. So. Stay tuned. There's more to come on this thing. Word. A lot more. Word. You didn't even show them what I did to the back. I didn't know you did anything to the back. I've been up here. What do you think I've been doing all the front the whole time, Mike? What do you think I've been doing all day? We mounted the uh, CVT delete kit. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have enough room to do both compressors, or one compressor on the other side. So we just did both compressors on this side. And I uh, drilled the frame, then we put nut certs in the frame to hold the compressors. Yeah, we're missing bolts right now. We just haven't got it all put together yet. But um, yeah, so we got these all mounted. And then over here on the other side of the blaze R. So this is where the battery goes. So we mounted two weatherproof relays here. So these will go to the battery and then the wire will come out of here for the to trigger the relays from the pressure switch and then we'll run the wire to you know compressor over there blah 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 so we got to take the cvt out disassemble it pull all the guts out of it throw it away and then <laughs> and then i think we're going to re-plumb the the lines and everything coming out of the cvt to the rest of the air system so we're going to look at that while we got it out but yeah this is the end of today. We're all gonna go home. And uh, yeah. Plus Wesley's really annoying, so I gotta go. Trey already left. He already annoyed Trey enough and he left. I did, hey, you know what happens. Yeah. <laughs> he had to go to the laundromat or something. But anyways, we'll be back. All right, guys, we're back again another day. Still working on the K5, Mike is hiding over there working on a Ford we uh, I got the k5 down got the wheels on it just to see if we were gonna fix the clearance issues that we had with the inner tubs can't really see it very well can't get a good video of it but I think we're gonna I think we're gonna clear it definitely straightened the wheels up so we uh, should be good to go there. And we have removed the tank out of the back. And we have it over here on the table for disassembly. So compressor delete in full effect here so we're gonna take the bolts out of both sides mike has a fancy way of getting the sides off so he has guided me in pulling them off we're gonna put pressure to it pop the sides a little bit to where we can pull them off so hang in there and let's get this taken apart
bueno. One of them freaking stripped. Which one? Not over here. You see it? Mm -hmm. Soft ass screws. What are they, stainless? I guess. Yeah. Cheap thing. How do you know it's cheap? I'm asking. Because. What size is that? Uh, I think this is a 3 16 That's probably why it stripped up the blood hole. What? Why? You're using the wrong size. What do you mean? These things, this thing fits in there super tight. These are metric, you dick. You say one three sixteen? Yep. Nah, it might be true. It might be three sixteen. Imagine that. There ain't no more. <laughs> now it's size circle. Yeah. Exactly. Where a freaking size circle is. So how far out do these other ones need to go? Just a couple of turns. Where's my screw making tool? Here it is. Here, hold on before you get all wild. Don't try this at home, kids. Hey, babe. Now it's size and mushed all the crap. Yeah. I'm gonna have to swap it out for a 316s. Just put it. Put it in that hole. Bro, chicken wow wow. What size box end is that? Come on. You got, you got the knowledge of the stars, Mike. Whatever. I believe it's 916. See, I knew you had it in you. Could be wrong. Here, it's right here. Oh. <laughs> I wasn't going to use that. I was going to use something that actually fit, except for it's not a 916. See? when you expect too much of me.
Corey Doc, giving them all that we got. Kick them the door, try to knock, but nobody answered. I'm going hard and taking my chances. I keep it moving, I keep advancing, keeping it gangster. Getting the perks and I'm happy to earn them. Mr. Ambitious, give it ambitious, Mr. Determined. Riding the storm, I focus on rainbow connections like Kermit. The water on my shoulders, it was a burden. Now I don't notice it, everything turning. Everything shifting, doing it different. I'm floating, I'm drifting. Shout out the slums, round the world, we uplifted. Doing the big. All right, guys, so here's where we're at. We got the compressor junk taken out of the tank. And obviously, there was a ton of extra stuff in there. Now, all we have left is the valves on the caps. We'll put what we need. Pressure switch, probably let the compressors fill through there. Tank is clean though, ready to be put back together. And we'll throw that in the scrap pile to never live another day. So here we go. We'll get to putting it back together while Mike... Uh, Cusses and works on a Ford. Because that's what people that work on Fords do. having to move the shocks because they were mounted down here before and with the old control arms the shock was farther out now the shocks moved closer in and so the shock was bottoming out before the truck even got close to being all the way down on the suspension so we're having to move the shock mounts from here to here so cut the old ones off and he's putting the new brackets on all right guys Aaron Mike here gonna give you just an overview of the k5 what all we've done so far on it um, this is gonna kind of conclude what we're working on it uh in this episode at this time um got a few things in the work for the future but uh for now we're gonna kind of go over what all we did um uh while it was in the shop so we've got uh basically basically mike tell them what you did over here so we changed the control arms from the michigan metalworks to the porter belts which meant the shock location wasn't going to work. So we fabbed up and relocated the shocks in the front. And then we also added AccuAir E-Level sensors, but the E-Level brain that was in this was fried. So we have a new brain on order from the new airlift company. So it should be here anytime now. And once we get that in, we'll get the E-Level the e going again. But 
So we did new shocks in the front, and then we're gonna do uh, in the back. We took the CVT apart because it burned up. So we stripped the CVT out and turned it into a regular VT, and then added two compressors, a water trap, and then plumbed in the new lines. The lines don't look very good right now because it's just temporary, but. We're gonna do a different airline setup pretty soon in the future, but for now, this is enough to get it going down the road. We're gonna wait for the new brain to come in. When the new brain comes in, this one will get us by. I can use everything manually right now and just adjust it. So when the new brain comes in that will run the E-level, we are gonna go through all of the airline and probably replumb the uh, a lot of the airline even underneath um, it's been installed for a while it's had moving parts and so we have a couple little leaks and we're just going to address the whole system plumbing wise yeah. also while it was in here we had to change out our battery cable and so we uh, got the new battery cable run got the e-level sensors mounted back here on this side not sure if you can see it oh, you want a be very well you can see we got the sensor mounted in there strapped to the arm so we've got those on both sides got our new battery hooked up new cables all that jazz and that's pretty much it for what we got going on like i said stay tuned to the channel uh we've got some new weather strips coming in and we're probably going to show you guys how to replace all of the weather strips on the top the tailgate the glass the whole nine yards so yeah we're back in action back together and uh, ready to roll temporarily like it is. Try to get some drive time in and then when the brain comes in, we'll redo some air ride, get the sensors set up and this baby will be ready for another long hauling road trip. So um, that's what we got on this episode. So, Aaron, Mike, Pancake Breakfast Club. Hell yeah. Checking out. See you later. Stay tuned.